Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Welcome to Dr. Boyce and Noma Langa. I'm here with Noma Langa Mushali Moses, founder of HealthyBlackWoman.com. How are you doing today, Noma? I'm doing great, Boyce. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm feeling mighty purple, and apparently you are also. <laughs> it, it looks great. And so, uh, you know, I uh, wanted to ask you this. Uh, have you been following on, you know, what's going on with with Bobby Christina and, and all the stuff about, you know, uh, just the the back and forth as far as the, not just the rumors but also the confirmed reports on on her condition and and how things happened up until this point. Um, certainly, this topic does interest me, and I have um I have been following it. Um, do you want me to give you a few few key things that I've heard so far that yeah, I've tell, been tell me what what you've heard because you've been kind of following. This. <clears throat> uh, what you know? What are the what what what's you know, give me the difference between what I'm hearing as a rumor versus what's actually confirmed. Okay. I'll tell you what I believe to be true. Um, you know, I watched a, a, show, a talk show called The Talk, and um, the guy from E! Entertainment came on in there, and he had a source in the family. So he gave a few things, which I think, I think they actually deliberately gave him that information so he could give clearer information or more accurate information. Um, The first thing that took me aback was um, he said that uh, Bobby Christina's family um, confirmed that this was alcohol and drug related. It was. So (laughs) definitely there's a yes. Okay. But this was yesterday. I'm only hearing those reports today. Other than his report, I'm only hearing those reports today. Um, Another thing that I've, that he said was, um, her family is really putting the responsibility on her husband. And the second thing about that is that they're really questioning whether this alleged husband is actually a husband because they're saying that they've never seen a marriage license or any evidence other than the fact that they say they're married um, that suggests that they are married. Um, and then the other thing is I they also said that she was um, in the hospital and she was in bad shape. I've seen reports that say she's doing better, and I've seen reports that are saying she's worse. Um, but what he said was that she's been hospitalized, and it's look, it looks really bad. Mm. Okay, so she's not she's she's not doing well. It was drug and alcohol related. Um, her husband Nick Gordon uh, may not be her husband, and they're blaming Nick for a lot of this. Now I wonder if they if they're blaming him. Uh, when they say they're blaming him, <clears throat> I'm, I wonder what that means. Um, you know, I, I mean, can he be blamed for her decision to use drugs and alcohol? Is he being blamed for uh, mistreating her so much in the relationship that she took her own life? Is he being blamed for the fact that they're just looking for a scapegoat? How do we distinguish? I mean, what what do you think? Well, <clears throat> another report, <clears throat> excuse me, another report that I heard said that um, him he had uh, an incident with her where actually the police was called to their house but when the police got there nobody was there and there's no um there's nothing there in other words but the neighbors had said that they heard you know a fight or you know noise that suggested a fight between Bobby Christina and um Gordon so i would say that you know and i think you know we're speculating here um let's be clear about that but i would say you know just like i said yesterday i think that if you look at everything that has happened okay um this young woman's mother passed away um just recently we saw a movie that brought back a lot of things into the limelight that maybe that's not necessarily what she wants to see um then maybe she's in a new marriage that is tumultuous um, and the anniversary of her mother's death is coming up. That's a lot. So you may find that um, that became too much for her. And whether she tried to take her life or was just trying to dull the pain with drugs and alcohol, we can't know. But I can see how that can happen. You know, today on my um, Facebook wall, uh, which people listening are invited to follow me on Facebook. My page is wide open. Anybody can follow. Um, you know, we were having a conversation about this. And I think somebody... Usually when you hit on a touchy topic like this, you have somebody that goes off and they say, you know, don't don't judge. You're being judgmental. You just pray for her. And I, and I think that's a little bit silly because uh, if all you're doing is praying and you're not learning and you're not doing, then then your prayers pretty much mean almost nothing. Uh, you know, and, and that's just a fact. Um, and so 
you know, someone said, well, well, Boyce, you don't know anything about her. You haven't talked to her. You don't know her as a person. And, you, you know, why are you judging? And and I said, you know, this. I'm tired of the stupidity. I'm tired of the the ignorance in that we will have tragedy after tragedy occur. And nobody really stops to say, what can we learn from this? What can we teach young people about this, about the dangers of drugs and alcohol? And what happens is when you don't address the tragedy, you're actually transferring, you're cursing your children because you're transferring the dysfunction onto your kids. And, um, and, and, and the truth is in this situation, that's kind of what you, you, you know, you can't help but say maybe this is kind of what's happened here. Um, and you know what it actually reminds me of a little bit? When I see people just sort of mulling over the tragedy and not actually picking up the lessons that are there for them, um, it makes me think about how they used to kill buffalo. Uh, I don't know if you know about this, but there used to be, uh, I think, uh, like 10, 20 million buffalo, like all throughout the West. And but but we killed all the we killed almost all of them. We just literally went out there and we would just hunt them, and they'd have stacks of buffalo bones like. 20 feet higher than a, a person's body like because they would just boom boom kill them from the trains well let me tell you how they were able to kill the buffalo and this is this this does have a point they were able to kill the buffalo very easily because they would see a herd of them they would shoot one bam and all the buffalo would stop and they would circle around the dead one like looking at him like like ooh, what happened here oh this is so sad right and so then they would start shooting all the buffalo who were standing around the original buffalo. And each time, more and more buffalo were available to be shot because every time one would die, they would all stand around and, and stare at it. And, and, and really, if the buffalo were smarter, they would have ran. <laughs> they would run faster. They would get away from the gunshots. So in a way, that's what I kind of see here. Like we we sometimes act like buffalo where – Something will happen, some tragedy will occur, someone will die of a drug overdose or die from diabetes and heart disease because they've been eating fried chicken and whatever their whole life. And we sit around and we mourn and we just look at and we say, oh, this is so sad. This is such a horribly unlucky random occurrence that we couldn't prevent. Let's pray about it. And then the next person dies from the same thing, the same thing, and it, it, it just continues. It continues when the truth is that we should stop and say, Okay, how do we learn from this? How do we run away from this tragedy? How do we make sure that the kids aren't dying from the same thing that the parents died from? Right? So so I think that that's that's why I advocate for the idea of saying, you know what? I feel so bad for Bobby Christina and I really hope she gets better and I hate it to see this tragedy happen the way it occurred, but it's okay to actually analyze and think through certain things so that we can kind of learn about the dangers of drugs and alcohol. Uh what you say, Noma? Um, you know, I have the the same kind of uh, sentiment towards this. Um, one of um, the things, the thoughts that I shared yesterday was, you know, as a mother, this really hit me. Like, wow, this young woman's life is following her mother's life almost exactly, you know. Um, and one of the things that I said is, unfortunately, as parents, as mothers, fathers, whatever, your kids are not going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to follow your example, you know. Um, that's just how it works. And unless somebody does something different, um, tragedies or similar tragedies tend to go from generation to generation to generation to generation. Um, and I'm a social commentator. You're a so social commentator. We're compelled to point those things out, you know. Um, so I... I think, you know, in response to people who say stop judging or stop talking or whatever, um, you know, if they have a job that they're doing, um, we don't go to their job and tell them to stop doing it. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, and I, and I get it. It's a very personal thing. And I get all kinds of, you know, feedback. Sometimes people will use many different things to say, well, you need to shut up and not say this. But the truth is I haven't stopped. Um, if something needs to be said, um, if something needs to be pointed out, um, it, it gets pointed out. And, and I think that's important, and I agree with you. And, and here's, you know, it's funny. You, you, you said that Bobby and, and Whitney, uh, Bobby, Christina, and Whitney Houston, um, that their lives are almost identical. And I agree with you for the most part in that there are so many parallels between the two tragedies that it's just uh, uh, sad to watch. But one important area where their lives were very different from each other is Whitney died at 48, Bobby might possibly die at 21. That's 27 additional years 
that Whitney had to live her life. You know, that's 27 more years of making hit records, having a lot of good experiences, falling in love, having children, traveling around the world. You know, so in a way, um, even though Whitney's death was tragic and you felt so bad for her because her, her downward spiral didn't happen all at once. It happened over the course of about a decade. Um, you at least feel that she had the better deal because she was able to live and 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 make choices and and grow up and you know have experiences and whereas Bobby it's almost like she went from 0 to 60 like that she, you're born you know Whitney grew into a life of fame and fortune Bobby was dropped into a life of fame and fortune which you know as a child that's going to that's going to warp your thinking uh she was on stage with Whitney at the age of 3 or 4 so you're born on stage. You're born in front of hundreds of thousands of people cheering for you every time you say "gag gag Google." That's going to change how you see the world, right? You you've got more money than you can count, um, and then on top of that, you're dealing with parents that are having so many issues that you know that they're not able to really spend that time nurturing you because they're nurturing their own issues with their, with their drugs and alcohol and everything else and. And so I almost feel like Bobby Christina, you know, in so many ways she didn't really have a chance. She's a little bit she has she's going through a little bit, in my opinion. It seems that her experience isn't that much different from say Michael Jackson, just in a different way, in that Michael Jackson was the star and he was the talent, but he never had a chance to grow up. And I wonder if Bobby Christina never really had that chance to um to to live a normal life, learn normal lessons and make normal decisions. You know, so so I I would say that Whitney actually got the better life uh, between the two because I mean the only thing worse than dying at forty eight is to die at twenty one. <laughs> I mean, that, well, it's not the only thing, but it's one of the things. You know, uh, I so so I, I hope she I, I hope she makes it through this. You know, but then I mean if she does, it's it's sort of like well what what happens then? You know what what what? How do you even rebuild and and even have a semblance of a normal life? You know, um, so I'm I'm pretty much done talking. I'll let you get the last word. Well, you know, I agree with you. I think that maybe this will be, or well, we can only hope, right? Um, we hope that she recovers. And then the next thing is we hope that this will be a significant enough event for her to be able to take a different approach, look at her life and say, okay, this is how it looks like it's going to go down. Um, and I need to do something very different. Um, and this is what I'm going to do. And again, I said this um, when we first talked about this story. Um, that's not easy when you have people around you and you don't know who to trust, who not to trust, who's telling you the truth, who has an agenda or a motive. That is a very, very confusing world to live in, and she lives in it. And then to be so young. So we can only hope, but um, I'm just not all that optimistic, unfortunately, for her. I think it's really hard. I think it's hard at my age, you know, and I'm fast approaching 40. It's hard to decipher who people are when a lot of people want something from you um, or think they can get something from you. Um, so at 21, I don't know, you know. You know, if if I if I were you know able to give Bobby Christina advice um, if if she makes it out of this, I first thing I tell her is I'd say I I think you should run away from show business, just get out of this industry, get away from it. Um, you know, be be somebody other than Whitney Houston's daughter. Um, you know, don't try to go, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe if she loves singing, I can't stop her from singing, but, um, you know, and acting and all the other things she wants to do, but I would advise her not to do it. I'd say, look, go, go, you know, go, go start a flower shop in Ecuador or something. Just get away from this and, and be a human being, you know, be a normal, get a chance to be a normal human being for a while and not be Whitney Houston's daughter, because that's just so much pressure. You got enough money, uh, so you don't have to work if you don't want to. Um, but find a purpose, because if you don't have a purpose and you've got all this money and all this free time, then eventually you're going to be sucked in uh, by depression, and eventually uh, drugs and alcohol become your way of self-medicating for so many so many people. And I just think um, I, I would just help her find a purpose and and make sure that purpose was as far away from entertainment as possible, so she doesn't have to live under that horror, that 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 crazy shadow of you know of of the great Whitney Houston. That that's too much, you know. So that's my two cents. Uh, thank you, Noma. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, and thank you all for checking us out. Um, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and this is Noma Langa Mushali Moses from Healthy Black Woman. And until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.